Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome to the second in our series of videos where we talk about bash basics. This time around we're going to talk about reading and editing text files. And this is a very important thing that you need to learn how to do if you're going to be working in the bash terminal. Everything on a Linux or a Unix system is saved in some way or another as a text file configuration files for the system, configuration files for programs. If you are going to write bash scripts, which are many programs that string a bunch of commands together, and you can use them just like other applications on your system, you're going to have to do that inside of a text editor. You will have to create text files. You will have to add lines to files. So I'm going to show you how to use Nano a little bit later on in the video, but before we do that, I'm going to show you uh, some pretty nifty things that we can do without opening any sort of editor at all. Okay? So I have recreated my folder here called junk. And if we do an ls, I have created a file in here called junk.txt. If I want to read that file and I don't want to open up an editor, I've got several options. The first of which is a program called cat. And cat is short for concatenate. And what it will do is, is if you give it a bunch of text files uh, after the command itself, it's going to go through those files and it will put all of the output from those files on the screen. Okay, And right up front, that might not seem like uh, something that's entirely useful. But if you have a lot of short little files and you need to know what's going on, then you can use the cat command to put them all together. In this case, we're just going to get it to concatenate uh, the junk.txt file. I have to put a dot there. And it prints what's in that particular file out on the screen. And it says nano is cool. And it says nano is awesome. And if I wanted to uh, look at a file that was bigger than, let's say, uh, a few lines, then I really couldn't use cat because what would happen is if I accessed that really, really long file that way, then what would happen is it would just roll right off the screen. And yeah, I could use the scroll wheel in a terminal emulator to go up and look at it. But if I need to manage it page by page, then I could do one of two things. The first thing that I could do is use a program called less. And less is actually more. So let's go ahead and put uh, junk.txt into the less program. And in this case, we only have two or three lines of text in there. So guess what? Uh, it, this isn't really super useful. Another thing that we can do is we can use the concatenate command along with the less command. And that way, we could take a whole string of files and then you could use the less to page through them. So the way we would do that is this. Oh, well, before we do that, I'll show you that in just a second. Let's create another file. So when we concatenate, we're actually going to be uh, doing two files at a time. So to create my file, I'm not going to open up an editor or anything. I'm going to issue a command, and then I'm going to direct the output into uh, a file. So... I'm going to use a command called echo, and all the echo command does is type text on a screen that I put in quotations. So uh, we've already got the nano theme going. Uh, so I put cat is great too, okay, within my quotations, and then I'm going to re I'm going to direct this into a file, and in this case, we'll call it junk. To dot txt. Okay? I got no output, so it did it. And now you see we have two files there. So I'm going to use the cat command to concatenate these two files. All right? So we're going to cat junk dot txt and junk to dot txt. So now you can see that it put all of that stuff together from those different files. 
if the files that I put together are going to be so long that they're going to run off the page, this is what I started to show you before we created our second file, then I can use cat and the less command together. So I'm going to use cat, and then I'm going to tell it what files to go to. Actually, I don't even need to retype that. I'm going to show you another thing. Use your up arrow, and it will show you the history of all the commands that you've typed in Bash. So if I need to reissue that command, which is what I want to do there, I'm just going to add to it. I'm going to use the pipe. And what the pipe does is it takes the output of one command and puts it into the input of another command. And in this case, we're going to put it into less. So in this one line of text here, I've got a lot of things going on. First of all, I'm going to look at all the stuff that's in two files, and then I'm going to pipe it into the less program so that if this was a particularly long uh, lot of text there that uh, you see there you go so a real world example of using cat okay so let's do cat and like I said this is good for short files we could use less or cat if you don't know how long the file is and you're only looking at one let's use less instead all right so we're going to do less and I'm going to tell the system where the file is, etc. And then we're going to do fs tab. And we're going to spell that correctly so it knows what to find. Sorry guys, dyslexia is a terrible disease. And this should open up this file and show it to us in less. And now we can just check out and see what's going on. And when we're done, Q to exit and we're out. So that's very useful just to check configuration files on the system. You want to see what's going on. That's how you would do it. So how would we actually edit a file? Well, let me show you another trick before I open up Nano, okay? Let's talk about adding a line to a bottom of a file. A lot of times when you are working with text files in Linux, really all you want to do is add a line to it. You do not want to... Uh, create, um, you know, have to open up the file, scroll down to the bottom. You just want to put another line at the bottom of the file. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let me ls here. And let's say that we wanted to add a line to the bottom of junk2.txt. Here's how we would do it. Echo. Remember that creates text. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to append it to the file. And if you put two little brackets there, then that tells it to append, okay? So let's do junk2.txt, junk2.txt. Watch what happens. I get no output, so obviously it worked. So let's cat junk2.txt. Yep. Type it incorrectly. See? And now it shows that I've added the line. So that's a, a basic primer on how you can manipulate text files without even opening up a program at all. But it's a little bit more convenient to use an editor for most of us. Now, depending on your desktop, you may have a nice GUI editor that you can use, but if you're working at a terminal anyway, you're going to probably want to use a command line editor. There's a lot to choose from, and they go from something that's completely unintuitive, like the VI or VI editor, or VIM, uh, as it's called these days, or uh, you can use something really nifty called Nano, which is my go-to. And I like Nano because it comes installed by default on Ubuntu and Debian, and Arch Linux, which are the ones that I use all the time. And I found it on Fedora as well. It's becoming pretty universal. So let's take a look at Nano. To get Nano, you just type Nano. And now we can uh, start creating a file. Okay, so I, I've written a line in Nano. And if I want to save this file, then I can use the control key and the O. This will write out. 
and I'll give it a file name and we'll call this uh, nanotest.txt I don't want the extra dot there although it wouldn't matter I could leave that in there if I wanted to and enter to write out the file and it tells me that we've written out one line so I have saved my work there to get out of nano I use control and X and I'm gone so now you see that our uh, file is created so nanotest.txt is there so to use nano to work on uh, files in the system to actually be able to edit uh, a system file for instance or a configuration file that wasn't in your home folder you would have to do that with accelerated or, or rather elevated privileges if you are working on a system where you do not have administrative privileges you can use nano to read a file but you can't actually uh, you can you can use it to read a file but you can't change it so in that case well, let's do nano and then we're going to go to ETC again and we're going to look at FS tab which is a configuration file and if I open this up there it is but I can't actually modify anything so if I come down here and so you know put in uh, okay and if I try and actually modify this it's not going to let me All right. It says nope you don't have the privileges to do that I can't change that file and that's just uh, to make sure that people don't go poking around and modifying things that they shouldn't so let's exit out of that but what if we really did want to do this okay then we could uh, do it this way if you have administrative privileges which most people watching this video will sudo nano and then etc fs tab okay and it opens up the file and now if I make any changes and save them they will actually save so that is the basics on how to use nano and nano is really a flexible tool those little shortcuts down there at the bottom that you have those little shortcuts down there at the bottom uh, they are quite useful and you can move text around you can cut and paste you can do pretty much anything that you want to do in a graphical editor but you don't have to be in a graphical editor you are on the uh, terminal and there you go so that is the basics of manipulating text files and changing things in text files and a few tips and tricks on how you can do that now this is a skill that we will be using over and over and over again as we advanced through working on the terminal in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, privileges and we're going to talk about file permissions and how you work with them in Bash. So stick around for that one coming up. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out freedompenguin.com, check out Easy Linux on the web, and check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, when you're there, give it a like.